everybody. We've got a superstar session coming up, best practices and pitfalls to avoid when creating game videos. And that's with Natalia Schumann from Alkanost. Natalia, are you there? I am over here. Say hello. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Ah, yes, I can see you loud and clear. How are you doing today? I'm just perfect. And it's so nice to see you today. And uh, I really enjoyed the previous presentation. And thank you for the opportunity to listen to other speakers. Um, how are you today? Yeah, very good. Thank you. We're really excited about hearing all about your superstar session, which is best practices and pitfalls to avoid when creating game videos. Over to you. Uh, well, guys, hi. Um, my name is uh, Natalia. I work at uh, Alkanost. Uh, you might have heard that uh, at Alkanost, uh, we uh, create, uh, we, we localize uh, games into 70 languages, but we, what we do also is uh, creating videos for games. And uh, this is what uh, I'm going to talk about today. Uh, best practices and pitfalls to avoid when creating game videos. Um, well, um, uh, what, uh, what I'd like to start from. Um, we have been creating game videos for years. We usually create game videos from scratch and from script writing to sound design. Uh, at this moment, there are uh, 123 game videos in our portfolio on YouTube, but in fact, there is more. And I believe that our production experience might be useful for you. Uh, for you to evaluate what our experience is based on, I'd like to show you a short demo reel. Uh, it will take 30 seconds and I will come and we will come back from practice to theory. Uh, let me now ask uh, Kelly to launch the uh, demo reel video for us. As, uh, as you can see, the videos are different, uh, but to produce any video, be it a trailer for a marketplace or a teaser for an advertising campaign, we have a production pipeline that each video project uh, goes through. Well, here it is, and as uh, simple as that, uh, you can easily follow the same process when creating a game video on your own. And what I'm going to do today is to guide you through the process and give you some practical clues on how to end up with a game video that you will be proud to show to everyone. Uh, well, let's hit the road. Uh, everything starts from uh, the brief. It's a short questionnaire that determines the framework conditions. Uh, our brief contains, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 12 questions, uh, but I'd like to highlight four of them. Because what you decide here will influence further decisions you will be making on the production stages. Well, first, uh, ask yourself, is your video intended to bring the users to the games page uh, or whether the, its goal is to convert the game page visitors into users? Well, uh, the context matters. And when you know the goal and when you realize uh, the context a user will be watching your video, it will be easier for you to develop the ideas. Uh, then think about the audience your video is intended to, uh, their way of perception, their, led, or their red lines, uh, their ability to understand or even to decrypt your message. They will depend on factors like their cultural background, gaming experience, and etc. And this could affect your creative decisions uh, regarding the concept and the style of the video. Uh, what else your decisions could be influenced by are the rules and uh, regulations of the platforms you are going to place your video on. Uh, a simple example, uh, if you need a video for the App Store, its duration must be from 15 to 30 seconds, and it's sharp. Uh, moreover, to meet the recommendations of the App Store, you should better focus on showing actual gameplay, uh, rather on telling a game universe story, for example. Uh, and this way, uh, to avoid the necessity to redo your video significantly, uh, just give, your, uh, give the guidelines of the specific platforms a close read. And then, keeping in mind all the above, uh, prioritize your game's key features. 
for example, uh, uh, if your target audience is users that are not too experienced in gaming, it might be a good idea to focus rather on basic functions of the game than, let's say, delve too deep into combat uh, tactics or other features that advanced player would appreciate. Uh, an example of how the prioritized list could look like is just right on the screen on the right corner. Of course, prioritizing isn't as simple as it seems because you're a developer and each game feature is like a child of yours and it's difficult to choose what to omit. Uh, but this is what you need to go through uh, in order to stay focused on the features that have the best chances to pick your audience's attention. Um, well, when the framework has taken its shape, it's time to think over the script. Um, well, uh, what we have here, uh, first of all, script writing is an exciting process, but it's Russian thrill uh, can do you a disservice. Uh, and when the thoughts are spreading out, a comprehensive, comprehensive approach is what can help. Uh, again, let's have a look at the screenshot. There is a sample sample script and it shows that it has specific structure um, and uh, you can see that each scene in the video uh, serves a specific function in our sample case it's to elaborate on a specific game feature uh, and not only the visual part like like in the action in the frame column uh, should serve this function uh, the call to actions on the banners and the voiceover text they should tell the same story too uh, so everything in the scene should be connected. And to make it even easier for your audience to follow your, th your thoughts, uh, try to stick to one feature, one scene principle. Um, this will help, uh, help you keep the narrative clear, avoid overloading, and move from one feature to another quite smoothly. Uh, other working on the script is riveting and absorbent, it's crucial to remember uh, what, what can affect uh, the production in your particular circumstances. Uh, just all we know that uh, you might have a budget limit, the lack of manpower, a deadline, or all this together. And that's why when thinking over the visual part of your video, ask yourself, what assets will each scene be made from? Uh, would the just actual gameplay footage be enough to demonstrate a specific feature and if not, do you have enough resources to show the feature uh, in a more complex way? Well, just give this question at least a pre preliminary thought. And if you were mistaken, the storyboarding stage will unveil it. Um, when developing a storyboard, remember that for some scenes, you might need to design a few stages. Uh, as for the scenes where the gameplay capture are supposed to be, uh, captures are supposed to be shown, consider recording the uh, gameplay at this stage, then review the captures and make sure that they convey the idea of the scene fully. Uh, if the capture doesn't work as well as you thought, and it could happen, there are at least three options to avoid a disaster. First, you can at least come back to the script and revise it. Uh, but there is a better option. I, will, I would say even maybe the best one, uh, it is to allocate resources for building this scene according to the script just in the game engine and making all necessary adjustments and record the gameplay not from the, uh, not from the game build, but from the engine. Uh, one more option is to show the feature uh, by means of animated graphics, be it new art that you will design precisely for the video or uh, already existing game assets. Uh, if you need a video in different uh, aspect ratios, storyboarding for these extra, extra versions, it isn't a must, but it's still a thing to consider. Uh, I'll try to explain why. Um, it may turn out that a certain scene doesn't look understandable, for instance, just because of cropping for a vert vertical version of a video. And uh, if you accommodate vari variations in advance, you can save some resources later and some nerves too. <laughs> And to simplify the work for your production team, it would be good if you organize all the visual assets wisely. Um, just avoid uh, uh, superfluous uh, files. Uh, uh, so select only the art that is necessary and make this collection of the assets uh, quite easy to navigate. And uh, now let me show you one more uh, exam example. It will be the video that required a really well thought storyboarding. Uh, it consists of the scene, scenes with the animated graphics. And arranging all the art for this video on the storyboarding stage 
was a good way to simplify the animation stage. Well, let me ask Kelly to help me one more time. This time, let's watch a Monster Hustle game teaser. Well, if the video that you need for your game uh, is uh, something of this kind, uh, it may, oh, just a, so just a moment, need to share my screen again. Um, well, if the video you need for your game is something of this kind, uh, it may turn out that some necessary visual details don't exist in your assets yet, and you might need to draw them specifically just for your video. Well, when you're all set with the storyboard, it's time to move forward, but not to the animation yet. Uh, now let's move forward to the background music and voiceover track. Uh, yeah, before animation, guys. <laughs> and let's start from, from music. Uh, the best solution is to select the background track before you start working on the animation. Uh, it will allow you to make your animation dancing in the tempo of, um, of the music. And this way, the audio sequence and video sequence, they will be telling the same uh, story. They will echo each other. And the watching experience will become, will become more immersive and enjoyable. Uh, remember that you don't have to stick to the in-game music. Uh, for instance, the ambient music from locations may turn out to be too monotonous. It may not uh, suit the thematical uh, structure or emotional load of your video. Um, in terms of the voiceover, before you record the text with a native speaking professional, record the voiceover just by yourself uh, and try to combine the, this draft narration with the storyboard and with the music. Uh, this way you will be able to double check if the voice and the picture support each other in terms of sense and uh, whether they tell the same story again. And if you notice any drawbacks, uh, on this stage, it's quite easy to correct errors. Um, next, uh, once you made, made sure that the, that the voiceover text is flawless, uh, provide a voiceover artist not only with the text to read out loud, but also with the storyboard, with the music and specific instructions. Uh, for instance, elaborate on what kind of a storyteller you want them to impersonate. Describe the, uh, the desired manner of speaking, voice tone, pace, mm, but uh, last, not, last but not least, explain to the voiceover artist how your character's names and even the game game's title should be pronounced, including stresses. It looks like a little thing, but it really matters on the voiceover recording stage. <clears throat> well, when the music is selected and the professional voiceover is recorded, it's time to move forward to the animation, anim animation stage finally. Uh, this stage is where you become focused on motion design. Uh, to simplify the production process and even make it more swift, try assembling uh, the video scene by scene. Uh, animate one or two scenes and evaluate the intermediate result. Um, when, uh, remember that uh, your team might have their say as well. And if you encounter mutually exclusive ideas, as, uh, your task will be to reconcile different points of view structure your team's comments and provide a motion design team with consistent and coherent feedback. Uh, when, uh, when evaluating the intermediate results, remember that you need something more than a nicely looking animation. You need an attention grabbing video. And for this purpose, focus on what the viewer's attention is being, con uh, on how the viewer's attention is being controlled. For instance, uh, what you can do here, you can zoom in, you can make the camera uh, follow a key moving object, you can highlight this object, or even magnify it, or add animated pointer. And this is not an executive list, uh, not, not an exhaustive list. And tricks like this make the video easy to watch, and this effect doesn't come out of the blue. It should be embedded into the animation. And what also should be embedded is a synchronization of the motion uh, with the beat of the background music. To achieve this, uh, create a metronome that will follow the tempo of the music and try showing key animated actions on the stressed beat. Uh, have a look at the screenshot. Uh, here you can see that the stressed beats of the metronome, uh, it's at the bottom, uh, correspond to the beat of the track. Uh, believe it or not, but such a simple thing can work really well as a skeleton of the animation. 
Of course, there are much more details that make the animation just terrific or quite the opposite spoil the impression. Uh, but not uh, only the carefulness of the execution matters. Uh, consider the animation not simply as an embellishment. Consider it as the means of transmitting ideas. Uh, make your animation meaningful. And at the same time, <clears throat> try making the motion, transmitting the emotion. Uh, when the right ideas and the right emotions are met, the magic is being born. And when the animation is ready, the final stage is coming, the sound design. At this stage, you might need to uh, cut the music track according to the duration of the animation, so that the particular parts of the tune will match the particular events in the video sequence. And with the aid of sound effects, you will be able to enhance specific emotions, be it excitement, fear, or even, uh, or, or even something frightening. Uh, such actions as scene change and tagline, the tagline flying in, or the game's logo coming are worth uh, sounding too. But just don't go overboard. Use sounds, uh, effect, uh, sound effects wisely and emphasize only what needs to be emphasized. On the other hand, there is a fact that may discourage you when you think of the sound design for your video. The fact is, from one third to two third users uh, watch videos muted. And uh, as we see at the Talconos, the game video's creator job is to make the video ideal for both those who watch video with, with sound and without. Friendly speaking, the sound design won't cost you an arm and a leg. It seems that it uh, isn't worth, uh, worth it to skimp on it. Uh, as an argument in, uh, in favor of taking care of sound design, I'd like to show you uh, one, uh, one more video where the music and sounds are essential, essential parts. Uh, let me ask uh, Kale to help me one more time. Uh, it's a video we created recently for Infinity 2 game. Well, let's give it a listen. Sometimes it's not too easy to take a video to pieces uh, in search of the secret ingredient that makes it cool and juicy. Usually it's a combination of a well thought concept and flawless execution. However, if I would have to rate the most common mistakes in the game video production, I would mention these 12 points. Uh, those that are listed on the left uh, have roots in the conceptual part. Uh, it's about some loose ends at the briefing and script writing stages. Others that are listed on the right are the consequences of an imperfect production, like the absence of visual, ac uh, visual accents, trembling camera, pixelization, and so on. And some of them that are listed in the triangle uh, in the middle, they are not crucial. They're not actually mistakes. But still, without them, the video would have a more polished look. Uh, what I mean here, it's too long exposition of the game's title or the studio logo at the very beginning of the video. These uh, are attention grabbing seconds and they should, they should be really meaningful and catchy. Uh, then uh, it could be uh, scenes duration imbalance. Uh, it could be inaccurate synchronization of the animation with the music. And on top of that, uh, sometimes it's really bitter to see missed opportunities to send shivers down to a viewer's spine. Uh, all these drawbacks, they just sometimes don't let the magic happen. Uh, well, how not to fall into these traps? Of course, there is no silver bullet, at, le uh, at least I don't know it. But let me give you a piece of advice. Uh, try to wear a potential player and potential viewer uh, pair of shoes. Imagine the context your videos will be shown and imagine that you need to explain what your game is all about to a person who knows nothing about it and maybe has never played any game like this before. 
uh, well, what, what to do? Just help this person and uh, motivate them uh, to give your game a try. Well, uh, I hope all this will help you give the, give the audience compelling reasons to play and enjoy, uh, and I hope you will enjoy the video production process. Um, I wish you good luck with your games promotion. Uh, let me thank uh, let me thank uh, Kelly for her assistance during the presentation. It was a great help, and thank you all guys for your attention. It was my pleasure to share the experience with you. Thank you so much, Natalia. Thank you for joining us today. We've got some questions for you if you would have a bit of time to answer them. Uh, great. The first question is my question. I'm going to ask the, the hard ones. And so I guess a question would be, how do you develop great videos for localization purposes? Because every culture has got a different way of connecting, not just with video, but with sound. So how do we design, I guess, trailers or game videos for the purposes of different cultures, countries, territories, etc.? Uh, just a terrific question, Kelly. Thank you so much. Because uh, video localization is a thing that I, I can I can talk I don't know for hours. Uh, you know, uh, from uh, I would I would start from technical uh, technical part. Uh, sometimes uh, it's just enough to uh, translate gameplay gameplay captures uh, translate uh, captions like just uh, written text on the screen and that's it. But sometimes if the video has some UI shown, if there is a voiceover, uh, it may require uh, almost a complete uh, recreation. So for each localization, you might need to, uh, uh, to have a lot of job to be done. And uh, uh, there is one trick, if, if we are here for a piece of practical advice, I would give a small trick that when you uh, localize the video, uh, the duration of the voiceover will determine how long your video will last. So if you want to record, uh, I don't know, to localize the video from uh, English to Japanese, you, you need to translate the text first, uh, the voiceover text, and to evaluate uh, how long will it take to read it out loud. And it may happen that uh, uh, if you have your video in English for 30 seconds, for a Japanese edition, you might need 40 seconds. And uh, uh, what you can do here, if your technical requirements allow, uh, you can, uh, uh, make the animation longer, so adjust the animation in, in the tempo of the new voiceover. Or if you uh, if you need to stick to this uh, 30 seconds limit, that is quite often, uh, you can just uh, edit the text uh, so that make it shorter and try to fit this text uh, into, into the timing you have. Well, uh, I think that's uh, the most important from, pro pro from the practical part. Uh, one more thing, uh, if you, uh, if when creating a video, you know at the very beginning that you need it in a few languages, uh, it would be a great help for you. Uh, if you if, if you try to get rid of the text from the uh, UI, it's like messages in the game, like uh, characters, dialogues, uh, try to uh, at least, um, if you need to show it, try to make it not as a part of a video sequence like a game capture, but try to overlay it uh, on the production stage like a part uh, of the, uh, um, like a part that you can easily edit. And this will simplify localization for you. Just guys believe it will simplify. Wow. There's a lot to take on when you're thinking about doing great videos. I didn't think it would be so sort of involved. We've got another question from the floor. Do you uh -huh. struggle to explain to clients that a shorter runtime for promo videos are usually beneficial? Do people have a habit of associating value for money with duration? This is a question mm -hmm. that I get quite a lot actually in, in uh, game development. So what do you think? Um, with, the, uh, uh, with duration of the video or with duration of the production time frame, I think the first one. Well, thank you for the question. It, 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 I, I'd like to think a bit of it. Um, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, is it an, appro an appropriate thing to say? But uh, to answer your question, I need to say that uh, what, uh, what our Pricing, pricing principle here at Alconost. The video could have any duration and the duration in fact doesn't um, influence the price, I, I mean, a very direct way. Uh, we have, um, we charge per scene. So each video has uh, a few scenes and uh, the scene could have different content. It could have different, different complexity in, in terms of, any, of the animation. So, uh, you know, the trick here is that a five, uh, uh, the video that contains from five scenes 
could have at the same time 15 seconds duration or 30 seconds duration. So it depends. Uh, so we just don't we don't think that if we make a video like 35 seconds instead of 30, it will be I don't know 15 percent uh, more give you 15 percent more users. It, it doesn't work like that, I think. So uh, for pricing, we use this approach that is like. Uh, uh, the, the more complex the scene is, the more expensive it is to produce it. So I, I think it's quite logical. So I hope I, I answered the question. Yes, thank you. Um, another question would be, at what part should one start to think about creating great videos? I work a lot with uh, indie studios and they want to race towards making teaser trailers or videos right at the very start before they've established a lot of the pillars that they need to establish in game development because they just want to be out there. What advice would you give to indie developers? I would say that, you know, uh, um, maybe uh, I don't know if it works uh, as an insight, but, you know, uh, a game could have a few videos. Uh, so uh, so you can uh, start from a teaser even when the game has just been uh, on the soft launch stage, even when you need to develop more, more content and you know how many months of production of uh, coding uh, is, still, uh, is still waiting for you. Even at this stage, you can create a video. So, but just in this case, I would say that teaser, a teaser trailer would be a better option. So you won't have a necessity to show actual gameplay that might be quite, you know, quite different, become quite different in a few months. And you can just animate the assets like uh, characters, you can tell the game story, uh, you can try to apply some humor, uh, as you have seen in the Mo Monster Hustle video. Uh, so uh, there are many, plenty of opportunities uh, and you don't have to stick to the gameplay all the time. Great answer. Um, one final question, following on from the localization question that I asked at the beginning. Have you encountered a situation where it's been difficult to create a trailer for a specific region because of the content of the game conflicting with local broadcasting restriction standards or censorship guidelines? Has that, has that happened mm -hmm. to you? I know uh, uh, nothing pops in my head just uh, in this, uh, in, in this uh, dimension. Uh, but I'd say that uh, uh, usually when we have a customer and we know that they are aim, uh, aimed at a specific market, usually the customer is already kind of well prepared. And this will be the customer who, uh, who says like, guys, you know, we need to avoid, I don't know, this or that. Or so it, uh, uh, their clues will be a good thing. Uh, but also, uh, I would say in terms of the art or design or just the uh, understandability of the concepts. Uh, the thing is that uh, as we work uh, in localization for years, uh, we have uh, a few hundred of native speakers that, who live in different countries. And if we need, if, if there is a necessity, we can just come to them, uh, to, the, to the person who represents the target audience uh, in, in terms of the country or language, and uh, ask them for a, for a piece of advice for their consultation. And I'm sure that they will do it in, in the best possible way. Thank you so much, Natalia. It's been really riveting to listen to you talk about game videos in this way. And I think that everybody that has uh, spent some time like looking at, at what uh, Alkanos do is it's really impressive what you guys do. So thank you very much indeed. And uh, I want to hear you talk about localization in game videos um, at the next Pocket Gamer Connects Digital, maybe seven in July. It'd be great to see you. Thank you so much for your time. Enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you. Enjoy your evening. Thank you, guys. Bye.